Do you feel like even though you eat healthy, you're still not able to lose weight? Or maybe you've even just started exercising and you still can't get that scale to move? You're going to want to listen to this episode. We're going to go over three non-negotiables that you must do in order to lose weight. We're also going to go over how to get back on track. Maybe you've been able to lose some weight, but you find yourself losing that same 10 pounds over and over again. You start strong, but you'll lose your motivation and you go back to the same old habits. If that sounds like you, you want to listen to the very end because we've got some good tips for you. Grab your coffee. It's going to be a good one. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Candidly with Coffee. Hey, we're back. Happy Friday by the time you guys listen to this. Yes, happy Friday. Russ, what's up? Lightning fast. Man, blink of an eye. Boom, we're already here. I I had to even stop and think. Is it Friday? Yeah, it's Friday. Yep, just like that. Holy Toledo. Cheers. What did you say to me yesterday? Like, bink. When you're busy, time is oblivious, like days just go quick. Mm-mm. Not about say? when you're busy. It's I can't even think of the word, but I if used... you are on a good path, a good frequency in your life, time goes like, time is like lightning. Yes, I agree. When you are in a low frequency and things are not going good and you're Mm-mm. not in a good place, time is like slow as molasses feels like a snail in your brain i've been there i know yeah sucks it, it's everything. every day is a grind right so if you are feeling like things are like if you're not looking at the clock you're not like oh my god when is it going to be time to leave work then you're on the right path facts i, I look at the clock and want to slow it down that's yeah. a good sign yeah exactly we run out of time sometimes we can't even do everything we want to do i do i feel like i run out of time time's not on our side no, I really do. I really feel like I run out of time to do. Every day, my to-do list goes into the next to-do list. And you guys should take this up, drop to a gem. Time is not on our side. Remember that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, you guys. I just wanted to start out by saying thank you so much to Grizzly Love for leaving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. She wrote, Janine and Mike are amazing. I look forward to their podcast every Monday and Friday. Valuable advice delivered in a highly entertaining and relatable way their chemistry is infectious hey let's go i loved that that's nice nice compliment thank you wow that's so nice thank you for that thank you so much and if you are not already following our instagram for this podcast i recommend it you guys it's candidly underscore with coffee we do daily motivational talks and stories. We do the walk and talk or candid convos and different things like that. But all of the action over on that Instagram takes place in stories. So if you're missing out because we only do two episodes a week and you need more, then you can just tune in for a few minutes every day to our Instagram. There you go. Tune in. Yeah. So I'd like to say tap. In. I started saying that because of you. <laughs> tap in. What does tap in mean? Same thing, you're just tapping in. Is it like wrestling when you tap in? Remember, like tag team wrestling? That's right. I never looked at it that way. You're right. Remember, you just tap your partner and you go. Yeah, you tap tap in, in, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. I don't know. But I've also, you guys, I'm really excited because I don't know why I haven't done this sooner, but I launched a newsletter. So if you are part of my, if you've ever been a client of mine, you're already on my list, so you're going to get it. But if you are, if you've not worked with me, then you'll want to head over to my Instagram at Jay's Body Bootcamp, click on the link in my bio and sign up for the free recipe newsletter. I'm going to be doing a biweekly newsletter. Not only are you going to get a free recipe, maybe sometimes it'll be a recipe and it'll have the QR code where you can scan it into the Nutrition IX app, but it'll also, sometimes it'll be like my fast food order, like what I order at fast food and I'll give you guys the calculated macros already. So I'm doing the the hard work for you guys. Making it easy for them. So I'm going to just, I don't know, I'm going to do, try to do something really cool and valuable every two weeks. So I'm not going to spam, but every two weeks I'm going to be sending you a newsletter. So you'll want to get in on that. Get in on that. And if you, once you sign up, you'll get the first one, you'll get a link to download the very first one, but the next one will come out, um, not this Monday, but the next Monday, it'll be every other Monday. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. New things are coming. I am excited. Okay, Big quick things. Special Forces recap. So we watched Special Forces again. I just love this show. That's a good show. Me I just too. love it so much. I was really sad about that Savannah Chrisley, she quit. 
she quit. She didn't even, she said, I'm not there mentally. I don't even want to attempt this task. And it's like, how can you just not? It's See, one- the purpose of the show is to break you to that mental hurdle. And right. she went there and didn't fulfill her purpose. You gave up on yourself. Right. You guys. See the message? Stop giving up on yourself. Right. Because it's not, and Tyler's, I don't get it. Do they just start kicking people off? I said, no. Nope. Every single one of them can make it to the end. Yes. It's not about eliminating people. It's about everyone, even if they fail a task, they are still on the show. It's about trying, even though you're scared, and even though you're probably going to fail if it's not something that you can accomplish. But it's not succeeding or failing It's trying regardless. So like Savannah, she didn't want to do the task. So she quit. That's the worst kind of quitting. To me, it's if you do the task and you fail miserably, you get injured. That's one thing, a medical discharge. Of course. If you don't even try. Man, see, and now she has an out because of that. That Her her brain, her mental is going to remember she has an out. So when things get tough or something she doesn't want to do, quit. Done. It's too hard. I'm out. That's a bad mindset to have. Yeah. Every time you do that, the brain is so it's think of the brain as like little pathways that you can, that you can carve out. And every time you do things like that, you're carving out a pathway that you don't want. And the deeper that pathway goes, the harder it is to get out of it. For sure. A hundred percent. But for example, like if you quit a workout or if you're like in an orange theory class and halfway through you're like you know what i definitely don't want to do what's coming up so i'm just gonna leave early if you do that one time it will be easier to do it again and again and again i have never allowed myself to walk out of class early for that reason because i'm like no that it that would be a bat once i do it once i will do it more i thought about that yesterday i'm not gonna lie to you i went to class i got through the boxing class Second class, the second hour starts as Muay Thai. I'm already drained. I'm like, don't want to do this. But you know what, though? I keep thinking, like, this is what the fighters feel like. I'm going to do it. Because I know it's a grind sometimes. And sometimes you don't want to do this shit. But Mm -hmm. when you do this shit, when you're tired and you don't want to do it, that builds that mental fortitude. Right. And it might not be your best. And that's okay. But don't quit. Don't quit. You don't want to remember when you do those, make those choices that are not the best choice. Think about your little brain. And the little pathways in your brain, you're like, ooh, do I really want to start carving out this pathway right now? No, you don't. You don't want that safety net like that. It's not good. It's not a good thing. Because like I said, anything gets hard in life. I'm quit. I'm out. It's too hard. Macros are too hard. I'm hungry. I quit. No. Yeah, don't quit. Don't do that. I get all my clients too. Don't do that. Keep going. Push. No. All right. Moving on to the hot coffee topic. It is Jada and Will Smith. Did you know that they have been separated for seven years. I just saw something on that. I didn't know. They have been pretending that they're still married, but they've truly been separated for seven years. I don't understand why they do some crazy shit like that. Celebrities do the weirdest things. Like, why not just cut it loose? It's done. The love's not there no more. Be amicable. Split and go. Go your own way. It's weird to me. Why would you... Separate why would you play this charade yeah. for the public? It's yeah, so weird. It is dumb. Now it makes sense. Do you remember for years the rumors have been that they were that they allowed each other to be open? Yes. So they were married, but they were in an open relationship and they could do their side things. That was always a rumor. Apparently, that probably started because they really were doing their side things because they have not been in a marriage for seven years. And yeah, technically, legally, they're married, but they've been separated for seven years. Well, what's funny about this, if they're separated, right? Like you're saying, why the hell do you get so mad and slap Chris Rock then? Because I heard, as if, as you if like I'm that. Pro- <laughs> I heard, you like that. I heard. I hate what people say. I heard. I would cite your source. I don't remember the yeah, source, yeah. but I did read somewhere okay. that he, when he found out they were separated, he asked her out Jada. No. like in That's hollywood ballsy, dude like in the inner circles they knew that they were separated and when he found out they were separated he asked her out yeah and you i think that's why ah uh, you can't do that man come on man you're running the same groups man is can't that, that is that like bro code yes they're not bfs but 
It's, bro, that's dude's ex-wife. You guys are in the same industry. Come on, man. There's plenty of other women out there. It's weird. Yeah, it is. It's weird. not a hundred percent bro code because they're not like BFFs. Never have right. been, but still, bro, we're in the same industry, dog. Like, why? Why are you gonna come after my ex-wife or ask her out? That's disrespectful. Yeah, I don't know, and especially because they weren't like publicly broken up. You know what I'm saying? I don't Isn't know. it weird how celebrities' lives are? Like, there's almost a pretend. Is it real or is it pretend? A lot of it's pretend. Yeah. For f- facade, business relationships. A lot of times marriage yeah, yeah. is business. It's kind it of, is. That's how people know, call it. It is I, a I'm, business. I don't look at it like that with us, though. No. I don't want it to be a business. Even though we have a business together, I don't want to look at it like our, our marriage is a business. No, I look at it just that we're partners and we're yes. like aligned on so many things. Exactly. We have that ability. We're, we're lucky that we're so compatible that we can work together. Yeah, True. True, because I never thought in a million years I'd be working with my wife. Never. I know. Never crossed my mind. I've been on my own boss. I always had that attitude like I don't take shit from nobody. I run my ship the way I want to. But, hey, it's not got to put your ego aside and work together. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Do I annoy you sometimes? Maybe. <laughs> what? What? You know why? You? Because yeah, you're why? patient and I'm not. And I'm trying to learn to get better with being patient. Yeah. I'm trying to calm down, take a deep breath. Because sometimes this, like I told you earlier, this ADHD brain of mine wants to Sometimes I got to save myself for myself. No, I know. Like today, I had to pull back. All right, bro. No going hard today. You're a little burnt out. You're a little tired. Like chill. Right. Calm down. I think I, I'm, I think I have a good skill. I'm pretty good at managing you. Like in terms of, I'm not talking about yeah, managing I know, I know, you I, like no, no, job wise. No, no, no. Or like understanding. Yes. Instead of poking me and pushing me and making me snap. Cause I could go that route quick. Yeah. Cause I can tell when your brain is like. When the hamsters are on the wheels, I can tell. There was a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, we do. We do. We have a lot going on. It's scary and exciting and unknown all in mixed in one, I guess I you could know, say. you guys. We have a lot going on. And we do. I just want to thank <clears throat> everyone who's listening to this show and all of our supporters and subscribers and everything because... We love y'all. We truly do. We do. We love doing this for you guys. We love what we do for a living. We love helping people and it's because you guys make it possible and you're helping to grow our show. You're sharing yes. it. You're commenting. Yes. All and that. You're interacting with us, man. Yeah. We appreciate it. We, we hear you guys and we see you guys. We really believe that. We really do. Let me just say that. We appreciate you. And I'm going to tell you this, no matter where this goes and how far we climb, I will always appreciate how far where we've come from oh people. yeah even from our, our beginning followers from the beginning of our podcast yeah. we were nobody's nothing mm-hmm. not saying we're somebody special but that was like bottom beginning times that people right. even tune in and listen to me and you see what we had to talk about they're still following us i know them? i remember instagram got weird and i had changed my topics so many times on my regular instagram account which is miss c underscore j yeah that I had to humble myself and be like, you know what? I need to start a new Instagram that's just dedicated to my health and fitness and nutrition. I had to start with no followers. It's hard to do. Do you know how it is to start an Instagram account and have no followers? Like I'm posting the content and yeah. nobody's watching it. No. <laughs> that's freaking humbling. Especially because I came off of, I have 40,000 followers on my other account and it's humbling I've, because of you guys and because people support the content and everything. Like yeah. I, I have 25,000 followers on Man, that account. That, yeah. See, adds you up. Know? You kept grinding. That's why you didn't tap. That's a perfect example. Things aren't going your way. I've been there right now. My, my, my page is growing slowly. It's whatever, but it's a grind. But one day I look back, but damn, I got through that grind. I didn't yeah. tap out. I didn't quit. Because right. a lot of times, like, what I really want to say, this shit, I'm, I'm out. All this. What am I doing this for? To please who? But. I enjoy doing this. This is who right. I am and what I want to do because I, I have a goal and a purpose. I need to help people. Purpose. Yes, that's It, it purpose all boils now. down to that. I think that's why we walk this earth is it, to figure out what is yes. our purpose in mm-hmm. life. And then once you figure it out, you it's gang, like that word you said the other day, or, gangbusters. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I know what my purpose is. I have yeah. I have to tell my story to other men and try to help them out and save them if I right. can. Right, that's my purpose too is to help women, like help women my age look and feel their best, not tap out, no, tap don't in. Tap, out. tap in instead tap of in. tapping out. Yeah. All right, hold my coffee. Let's go. Goes to. And like I said, before I get into this again, it's all in good fun. We actually had a, a good banter, this particular comment. 
I'm not, it's just, hold my coffee is all in good fun. Unless I tell you this is a freaking troll. I can't stand this person. And this is not the case in this case. Okay. Yeah, we just have fun. Because it's okay to have your opinion and I'm not sensitive. I have thick skin. So body by yoga 4158 says, I have been following you for a while now and I really like your videos. She's smart, by the way. You always throw in, start with a compliment if you're going to say something (laughs) that's smart. Yep. However, I wonder why you are so focused on your macronutrients and have little focus on your micronutrients. Not many vegetables and fruits for for vitamins and minerals, but lots of processed foods, protein bars, bread, chips. I am also a certified nutrition coach, which almost the same height and body weight as you, same macros as you, and also in menopause. And I would be really hungry if I ate all that processed food like you and no vegetables. However, I am not the chemical police or the macro police. I actually poked fun at her and She's said, the vegetable police, you're though. the, you're the processed foods police. Yes. Then. <laughs> yes. And the vegetable police. You know what? Basically, here's my thought process on that. For one, it's, it was not a accurate statement that I don't eat fruits and vegetables. That's actually not accurate. Eat lots of fruits here. Perception may be that way because I post one day of eating on my Instagram. I, if I'm going to post on my YouTube, if I'm going to post a video, it's going to be like my most delicious foods, things I really love. I, do I eat a ton of vegetables? No, I don't eat a ton of vegetables. Same here. Fruits. I do. I eat fruit every single day. Facts. I cut fresh fruit at all time. We buy strawberries, raspberries, blueberries several times a week, wash and have them in the fridge at all times. And I eat them every single day. I also like peaches and apples. So I I think maybe sometimes perception is that, but again, do I overly obsess about, am I eating too much processed food? No, but you know why? Because I feel really good. I feel good. I'm not, I'm only when I'm not feeling good. Do I stop and think, okay, let me take a look at what I'm doing. You know what it is? It's the old, so it says we're a Dodge. Did I say it right? Adage. The old like, adage. 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 Like, like we, old school thing, like we have to have vegetables. Guess what? For some people that don't like vegetables at all, there's vitamins. There's other things you can replace with those vegetables. Mm-hmm. I'm not a vegetable guy. I never have been. Mm-hmm. Uh, I voiced that. I don't like cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Sorry, it's not for me. I'm not going to eat something I don't enjoy, period. So... People always harp on processed well, foods and chemicals too much, but then like, do your blood work and see then. Yeah, that's my like thing. It's based work. on how you feel and your individuality. Because she's, she's, I love processed foods. Don't get me wrong. I would just, I wish I could eat them. And I always remember that when someone comments, wish has this type of comment, it's usually because they're like frustrated because damn, like, why can't I do that? It's one of, it comes from that place. So I totally get that. Yes. But you've this particular commenter, she maybe has had some situations where or health issues where she had to pull back on certain things to feel better. If I had something going on where I needed to revamp things so that I could feel better, I would certainly do that. For example, if I had a client that came to me and said, Janine, I'm on these macros, I'm struggling big time, like I'm starving. I would say, okay, let's look at your food logs. And if I saw that they're eating four snacks a day, small meals, lots of processed foods, that's where I'd be like, you know what? You're probably starving because for when you're eating too many times or too much processed food, you're not starting off with protein. And then we'll dive in to that particular scenario. But I can honestly tell you the way that I show you that I eat, it's how I actually eat. And right now at this time in the last few months, I feel great. I'm not hungry. I'm not deprived. I'm not feeling like I'm going to come out of my skin. I'm sleeping good. My weight, the weight's coming off. Yep. So that's why I eat the way I eat because I honestly look and feel my best. So there's no reason to change it. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Why are you going to mess with something? It's like right. the old rules. If it ain't broken, why fix it? It's right. working for you. But if someone's, I love cheese, but cheese gets me bloated and has explosive diarrhea, I would say, you know what? Sorry, but you probably shouldn't eat the cheese yeah. because you're not feeling good. If what? food doesn't make you feel good, then you have to change things. You understand something. We are not all the same people. Our bodies are all different. I'm lactose intolerant. I'm lucky that they have products on the market. I could handle cheese. I could drink Fair Life milk because of how it's processed. Luckily for me, I can handle the protein powders we use don't affect my stomach. But some people even more sensitive than me can't have that. So we're all different. You got to mm-hmm. find what works for you. It's not making you feel good. Stop eating or drinking it. Right. That's all you can do. Yeah, and I want to make sure you got, you understand that I don't have a cookie cutter program 
for my clients. I don't sign someone up and go, okay, here's my program. Do this exactly. Because everybody's very different. The way our inner machine, our machines work yes. genetically, maybe mm-hmm. because of th- ailments that we have or yeah. things we've already done to our bodies, everybody is different. So they need to approach things differently. So it, it's hard to, it's not something that I do and say, okay, eat exactly the way I eat this many meals at this time of day and you're going to be great. No, it, does, it doesn't work that way. It actually, you have to do what works for you. Exactly. It's That's the most it. important thing. Yep. But thank you for the comment because it's a good conversation of point. Of it, Very good. It's not, like I said, don't, I hope that the people that I select to do these hold my copies don't get, because a lot of the, if I select a troll, the troll is not going to be listening to this podcast. But if no. I select an actual subscriber, chances are they're going to hear that we featured the comment and, yes. and I just don't want you to take offense to it. It's a good conversation point, but I hope that my response makes sense to you okay we're moving on to comment corner first comment comes to us from nicole conzo 8233 and she says because of all your help i went from 135 down to 127 i'm five foot two and i'm still going strong normally i feel my best around 118 i just wanted to let you know how helpful this podcast is i've been trying to lose weight all year but didn't track my food. I'm so happy I finally started tracking and being consistent. Thank you, guys. What a difference that makes, doesn't it, tracking your food? But so people just, they, look, you tried all year. It's, and then you started tracking, and then the weight loss comes off. Like, why spin your wheels? It's not a miracle, man. It's not a miracle. It's just knowing what to put into your body, the, mm-hmm. amount, the right amount of fuel, not overconsumption either. So yes. everybody messes up. They think they're eating. Oh, I'm not eating much. Oh, really? Let's see. Film the whole day of eating mm-hmm. and let me see what you're eating. And I promise you, you're way over on your calories. What is it, like a thousand calories we eat, Americans, over that we think we eat? A thousand. You eat a thousand calories more than you think. Yep. And the average American consumes 3,600 calories a day. That's including ladies in that conversation. Yes. yes so could you imagine 3,600 calories in this little frame of yours? What would happen? I would gain a couple pounds a week. Yeah. If I ate 3,600 calories every day, I would gain about three, I would gain about three pounds a week. I'm right now I eat between 1400 to 1500 calories daily, six days a week. And one day a week I eat 2000 to 2400. See? And that's what I've been doing this entire cut and the weight is coming off. I feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, so, imagine if you ate 3,600 calories a day. Like they said, the average American, how big you'd be. I don't even eat 3,600 on my high calorie day. That's crazy. I know. But the, yeah, they do because people don't, they don't count liquid calories. They don't, like, they start their day at 1,000 calories and don't even realize it just by going to Starbucks and getting a pastry and a crap, frappuccino. And all that, too, is pay attention to your behavior. A lot of you guys are addicted to food. You don't realize it. You think it's not an addiction, but when you're eating fast food every day, you're addicted to it. Might not even taste good every day eating it. You might even get the same feeling as the first time you ate it the week and the end of the week. Well, because you're addicted to it and you're in denial, next thing you know, you're packing on weight. Look, you're talking to a guy who's an addictive personality type. That's me. Mm-hmm. And I've gotten fat, eating recklessly like that, big fat. <laughs> I don't know why tracking macros gets such a bad rap. Anything in life that you need want to achieve needs to have boundaries and you need it needs you need data. You need to track it. So why does tracking your food intake when you're doing it for the most important reason of all to live longer? And why does that get such a bad rap? It's like saying nobody you know, wants to do the work. Babe. I don't know. Nobody wants to do the work. I'm gonna say it. that's what it is. They're lazy. I'm gonna say it. they don't want to do the work. I get on some of my boy. What? How hard is it for you? You've weighed drugs when you're younger why can't you weigh food man come on let's go it's just easy but they don't want to do the work i I feel like they're stuck like their brain is just like it's not that hard maybe on the men's side on the women's side i feel like many women subscribe to this notion that tracking is not like that it is a disordered behavior of some sort can it become obsessive and disordered yes but anything can right? Anything anything can. can. But in general, I think people just automatically think that, oh, tracking, that's not good, that you're obsessed with dieting. It's not that at all. It's like anything in life that you're trying to achieve and work towards, you need data points. If you're saving for a house, you need to have $100,000 saved in five years. 
You're not just going to miraculously save 100000 unless you're tracking your savings. That means I have to put away this much every month. That means I have to not spend here and here in yeah. order to be able to put away. It's the same thing, but for whatever reason, people just think like they want to keep blindly, put a blindfold on and try to lose weight. That's what they're doing. Yes, they're- and, and, and men have egos. I've done it before when I was younger, bro. I got this. I can do this. So, okay, show me then. Take off your shirt. Show me. Where's your weight at? I got this. Let me see you in a month. You still look the same. So you got this, right? You know what you're doing? No, yeah, you don't. You're spinning men, your men, men have too much ego and pride, though, to ask for help. It's hilarious. They think they know it all. They think because they've done it in their younger years by bro science and winging it. Yes, of course, you can drop your carbs and go higher protein and do an old school. That'll work. But can you sustain it? Can you sustain it over a lifetime is the, is the question. Yeah, that's that is a good point. Sustaining it is actually the hardest part. The hardest part. Get to the you get there, you end the line, but can you sustain it? It's a whole do- different type of beast. Okay, moving on to the next question from Dawn A dot X, and she says, "When you're in a calorie deficit, do you subtract your workouts from what you eat for net calories, or do you just keep it set at a certain amount regardless? Do not ever mm-hmm. subtract calories from for exercise burned or for." D- subtract exercise for calories burn never do that nope that is the one of the biggest mistakes you're basically like eating back your deficit when you do that yeah and your macros depending on where you got your targets but it doesn't matter whether a coach figured it out for you you used a calculator whatever it's factoring in your activity into that number already that's the one thing second thing the calories that you burn during exercise is so much less than you think it is. These trackers and things, they're a shot in the dark. They're way mostly off. way off. Way off. It's just, it's not that easy to burn calories as you might think. Like I said, I maybe I burn maybe 300 calories in a hard Orange Theory one hour workout. But people will think they burn five, six, seven hundred calories in that work. The assumption, right? No. And then they treat themselves, oh, I earned this meal right here and I'm going to go smash this meal. And it's three times the amount of calories that you just burned. So make that make sense, people. Yeah. So definitely don't do that. And if you're using a tracker, if it's Nutrition IX, don't log your exercise in there. It gives nope. you back the calories. If it's My Fitness Pal, don't pay attention to that little thing that subtracts off the calories for exercise just don't do it don't even enter exercise into these trackers it is one of the stupidest things that trackers include and it's really steering people in the wrong direction yeah people ask me about that too like nah stay away from that all right moving on to the next question comes to us from kath daddy I don't know if you'll see this because this pod is a little older. She actually commented on an older episode, but I hope you do. Firstly, I just love Janine. She's a boss, so educated, such an excellent teacher. The both of you together have such good energy. My question is, I know muscle is important, and thus eating high protein is important. I'm currently trying to lose weight. The thing is, I find that it's easier for me to maintain a calorie deficit when I eat whatever I want and just stay within the calorie budget. When I go out of my way to prioritize protein uh, protein and get 100 plus grams, I struggle to stay in the deficit. Should I lose the weight first, then add in protein? I'm terrified of losing muscle as I lose weight, then end up with a slower metabolism, making it harder to maintain the weight loss. Would love to hear your thoughts. This is such a good question. That's a good question, actually. Okay, which brings me to what I talked about in the intro of this episode. It's There's three non-negotiables when you're trying to lose weight. Okay, three non-negotiables. They are... Counting calories. Got to do it. Tracking and hitting a minimum amount of protein. Got to do it. And I think a step goal. Facts. Okay. So if you want to lose weight, you can layer in lots of other things, bells and whistles. But if you're not doing those three things, you are not, this is not a good protocol for you. This is not a good weight loss program. Now, off the bat, what I catch you saying is just you just give yourself it's like a roadblock for protein. Like when I try to prioritize protein, what if you are my client, what I would say is, well, what are you trying to do to prioritize protein that's making it so unenjoyable? Like, Maybe you're just trying to eat a bunch of chicken breast. And that is boring. Yeah. Even myself, I'll be yeah. honest with you. I don't eat chicken breast. I eat chicken thighs. That's me personally. So maybe what I would say to you is, here's the thing. For one, you heard it. There's three non-negotiables. It's counting calories. It's hitting your protein, getting in a step goal. Counting calories, obviously, we know that's to establish the deficit. The protein is so that you lose body fat and not muscle. If you are in a deficit, not eating enough protein, 
you are going to have some muscle wasting. Okay. It's already hard enough to hold on to muscle when you're in a deficit. Yeah. If you are not eating protein. You are not going to have the desirable look that you're going for. And you are correct. Every amount, every bit of muscle that you lose will lower your metabolism. And muscle's not hard to build. It's hard to build. Super you hard. do not want to lose it. So not only do I think it, Protein is important. It's even more important when you're in a deficit. Yes. Facts. You, it needs to even be higher when in a deficit. Go for exceeding your goal. So what I would say to you, if you are my client, is let's revisit why you're having a hard time with staying in your deficit if you hit protein. Because it, that doesn't actually make sense. Because when you hit... When you eat a lot of protein... Yeah, it's very satisfying. And like scientifically, if you consume a big portion of your protein at the beginning of the day, you actually are more likely to stay in your deficit and eat less. Tons of studies have shown that. So what I would have you do is let's revisit where you're getting your protein from. Sure, chicken breast is great and lean proteins and all that stuff is great, but also let's do some fun things. Exactly. To make it not to make it enjoyable like a ninja creamy. Yep. It's like you're eating. It's like you're eating ice cream, but you're yeah. eating protein ice cream. Yeah. So make a protein ice cream. I I had a yogurt bowl yesterday. I did a scoop of One Up Nutrition protein. I made my little raspberry sauce. It's so good. Um, and then I did a tablespoon of nut butter and faya yogurt, and it was just so delicious. It was 400 calories and 50 grams of protein. So you see what she did there? She took her 400 dollars. What was the calories again? 400. 400. She took her $400 and got $500 return on investment. Yeah. ROI, you guys. Look at it like a business, like money. I got 400 bucks. What am I going to spend this with? Cool. I just made 100 bucks. It's, yeah, that's a lot of calories, but the protein return on yes, that investment exactly. was well worth it because it's, a, it's more than 40. More right? than 40, yep. Not only that, it was very, it had a great combination of fats in there and the protein and the carbs because I had granola, I had the almond butter. It was so satisfying that I didn't even look at the clock to eat again until four o'clock. I thought I should probably eat again. But look at this though. Check this out. Did you enjoy it? Was it good? I loved every bite. Exactly. I See? licked the bowl practice. I think people too, they think when they're on macros, listen, you guys, get out of that whole old mindset, okay, of chicken breast and broccoli and egg whites and all that boo, boring ass food, if I'm gonna call it that. You're not a competitor. You don't have to eat that way. You can eat the foods you enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of our program. You get to enjoy the foods that you like, that you mm -hmm. enjoy, that you truly enjoy. Not like mm -hmm. you're sitting there eating and like, oh, everybody you're dreading. Mm -hmm. Nobody, that's not sustainable. You're going to fail. You're going to break. I'm sorry. But mm -hmm. when you, like you, you said you enjoy it. I enjoy my food. Why are we having results? Because we enjoy our foods too. So think about this, you guys. My goal right now is I'm trying to hit 120 grams of protein Per week, I had a protein bar first thing in the morning, 20 grams of protein right off the bat. I have that every morning. It's like autopilot in my tracker, okay? 20 grams of protein. Then my first meal that I ate after that was this yogurt bowl, 50 grams of protein, 70 grams done and dusted by 10 a.m. That's already half your intake right there. I only need done 50 deal. grams left. That's it. So easy. What does that do? It makes my ability to have something a little more flexible for dinner and then my like PM snack yep. and the protein goal is satisfied. I'm within my calorie limit and I'm just cruising through this deficit. So hopefully that helps. Definitely. Re I would revisit, just get creative protein bars. You love maybe protein pancakes, it's me adding yogurt to things, cottage cheese in your eggs. Egg whites is a good way to increase protein to anything. Oatmeal, bowl of oatmeal with some protein powder and some egg whites in it yep. can have can be a 50 gram. You, gram. you showed me that hack one day. You're like, wait a minute. you make. I was eating that uh, protein oatmeal from Kodiak and you're like, you could add more protein. I go, I'm so stupid. You're right. And you're like, just throw a scoop of protein. Let it cool down a little bit after you cook it. Get, let it get a little cold. Throw the scoop of protein in so it doesn't get all clumpy. Just mix it in. Mm -hmm. And you can even mix in a little egg whites if you want more. And boom, you just have a hearty oatmeal protein bowl right, right there. So although it's a non-negotiable, so the answer is you got to get that protein in. Yes. Okay? It's a non-negotiable. Non but you don't have to suffer through it. No. Okay. You can make it enjoyable. And follow my Instagram for tips on how to have those high protein. Jay's Body Boot Camp. Yes. Because I give tons of tips on there. Also, my tons. whole days of eating here on YouTube. Because... You got to get that protein and you do not want to lose. No. But For also, longevity. I want to just touch on the, the third non-negotiable with that, which is the step goal. The reason why I like the step goal is because 
it really gives you an idea how active you really are each day. And it allows you to establish like a baseline for your activity. So if you're tracking all of your movement via steps every day and, you know, over the course of the week, you maybe you get, maybe you got 70,000 steps and you always get 70,000 steps and you're eating a certain amount of calories, like when I'm coaching clients, right? And then like down the road, someone's, oh, I think I'm stalled, but I'm hitting the same calories. I'm, things aren't moving. Then if I look at their steps, I'm like, you're averaging 40,000 steps a week. What's changed? See how easy it yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's not just about how many workouts you're getting in and all of that. Mm. It's your cumulative movement. And steps is a great way to establish a baseline of your movement and then to identify fluctuations in that movement. The step goal is the easiest way to do that. So that's why I like that. So counting calories, protein, step goal, three non-negotiables. Non-negotiable. And just learn to enjoy that. Learn to enjoy the protein. Yes. There's lots of ways. Don't get stuck in the in the mud. All right, moving on to the next question. <clears throat> Hazardish 4810. Falling off track, need advice. I've been doing so well since August 28th. The last two weeks have been going downhill. I honestly don't know why. It's so frustrating. I know that what I need to do, but maybe I need a little pep talk. Last week, I didn't work out at all. I've been consistently working out with my husband. He wanted to switch our rest day for the week because he had a stressful few work days. So we took a rest day. Then before I knew it, it turned into a whole week. I stayed on Damn. track with my macros and I didn't lose or gain. Now this past Saturday <clears throat> was my cheat day, but turned into a cheat weekend. Ooh. I feel myself spiraling for no good reason other than I should have just kept going even though my husband needed more rest. This is a cycle that's happened to me before I'm falling into it. We enjoy working out together. I've done it solo before. Also, anywho, started back fresh today, but I guess I'm just messing with my mentals and making me feel like I'm losing all my hard work from the past six weeks. I know it doesn't really get lost that fast, but I'm tired of losing control once I gain momentum. This brings me to what do you do when you fall off track? We talked about that in the intro here. What do you do? Happens. L let me first tell you this. It happens to everybody. Oh, yeah. Everybody. Do you know what this is? Let me explain to you what's happening. What's happening and the way you said you do this a lot is because that means you are only used to going hard when you're motivated. And when your motivation goes away and you, the discipline has to kick in, that's where you fall off. That's normal. A lot of people do that, but that's what's happening. It means that you are only able to operate when you're motivated. That's not good either. No, because motivation is always temporary. Yep. So until you can break through those barriers that makes you go through the motions and do the things, even when you don't want to, then it, you're always going to find this cycle. Kind of reminds me of this page. I don't know the name, but he, what this guy does, he goes around New York City. He'll stop like somebody like me. I'll be working for UPS. I'll be pushing the truck. He'll be like, hey, sir, can I stop and ask you, how do you stay fit for an older man? Like, he'll see me. And then I explain. And one guy said... I used to bodybuild and I used to weigh this and that, but now the motivation ain't there. Mm -hmm. It's discipline. It's doing it every day. Mm -hmm. The motivation's gone. He's like, I competed already. I'm over 50 years old. The guy was jacked. Over 50 years old. Discipline gets me to the gym every day. That's right. it. Not the There's nothing to be motivated. I don't compete no more. Right. I'm a happily married man. I'm not single. I'm not trying to chase anything. So the discipline gets me there every day. And that's what gets me there too because I'm tired every day and I go. And so what happens is, so, so the discipline gets you there and what gets you to stay disciplined is you... I know this sounds so cliche, but you yeah. really have to have a strong, why do you care? Yeah. Why do you care? Why are you doing this? Yep. Do you know how many times I've had the talk with myself? Like, why do I care? Why do I care? Why can't I just, why don't I, why can't I just be 20 pounds heavier and just be fine? I'm married. I'm 47 years old. Like I'm not trying to be out in the clubs anymore. So why do I care? You sound like a man, like my boys, like I'm married already. I don't need to get fit. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. I say, yeah. oh, why do I need to get fit? I'm married. I'm off the market. That's not the point, you dumbass. So that's not the why. You got to yeah. find your, so he yeah. doesn't have a good why. Yeah. And that's why you, your discipline's going to be not going to kick in if you don't have a strong why. You really have to dig deep and think, why am I doing this? And make a list, like a note in your phone, and list it out. These are all the reasons why I'm doing this. So when you have weak moments, open up that list and remind yourself, oh, yeah, this is why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because my mom died 
or at an early age. I don't yep. want to follow in those footsteps. Yep. Like I want to be an active grandparent when I have, when my kids have kids, I want to be vivacious and be able to do things with my kids. I want to get in front of my health or there's cancer in my family or whatever it may be, diabetes. I don't want to get diabetes like my grandmother and my mom and my sister or whatever. Yep. Whatever it is, or you're going to your 30-year high school reunion and you want to look hot as fudge. It doesn't always have to be like the perfect, it could be trivial, material reasons as well. Yep. Okay. And that could be on that list too, but make the list. Very important. Another thing you should probably think about is because this is it's common for this to happen at the four to six weeks mark because people always go let's use that word again gangbusters out the door they're all yeah. motivated or yep. whatever exactly but it, you also want to ask yourself is your program too rigid are your calories too low maybe shrink that deficit a little bit if you feel like the wheels are going to fall off the bus it could mean that you're just try, you're too, it's too rigid loosen the reins a little bit in a controlled way yeah Maybe you're trying to lose too much too fast, less than that. If you're trying to lose two pounds a week, switch that to a pound or a half a pound. It's still going to get the needle to move. It's better than letting the wheels fall off the bus and just crashing and burning. You got to remember this. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Right. That's the one thing I've learned. A lot of times I've, I'll have i get into something, I adhere to it. I'm gangbusters. I go all in, but I got to remind myself, like, it's a marathon, dude. Now, for you, you're saying it's every four to six weeks you get like this. That's not too long. So you're not at the point where I'm saying like, hey, you probably need a diet break. It's not that. It's for you personally, I think it's, and this is very common, which is why I picked this question, is that you're just having a hard time struggling how to operate on discipline and not motivation. Facts. Okay. Now, to me, your trigger in this particular situation, and it's a very common trigger, is a disrupted schedule. That little change right at the sweet spot of when your motivation was going away and you're, you switch the schedule on your rest days, that's enough to throw you off your game. Yes. It really is. It really, really that's is. That's why we work out on vacation. That's why. Yeah. Cause we keep the ball rolling yeah. because you go on vacation two, three, four, five days and you do no workouts and you're going to come home. And you think you're going to, it's hard, very hard, very hard to get back on. board. What I like to say is leave the placeholders there. So yeah, maybe on vacation, we're not going to go to the gym for two hours, no. but let's go to the gym at the same time we usually do. And maybe yes. we're, you know, not stay as long, but you keep in the placeholder there. Remember the pathways I was talking about in the brain? I do not want the ocean to wash away my pathway. Yes. Facts. Okay. The ocean of that vacation, the sand in my toes. I don't want the pathway to go away Yeah, because it's really hard to create that pathway. I want to keep it. It is So hard. yes, like even when I went to LA recently, I still got up at 5 a.m. I still went down to the hotel gym, got my workout in. So it was like, a, it was, it did not. Autopilot. That's it why. It did not disrupt. Look, I'm in a deficit and everything. It disrupted nothing. The trip, a, a recreational vacation trip disrupted nothing about my weight loss journey because I didn't disrupt my schedule. I kept everything the same, still stayed on track. Yeah. So that's another thing. But I know that when I've felt this way, I almost, for me, it feels like a runaway train. I want to stop the train and hit the reset button. When that happens to me, it happens. Yeah. And like I said, it happens to everybody. Everybody. So first thing I would say is revisit your why. Why do you want this? And it has to be strong enough. So make that list. Take some time to make that list. You're going to need it because during those weak moments, you can pull up that list and it's going to help you. Facts. Another thing you can do is make some sort of change to your macros. Maybe you're going to change. Maybe you're going to be like, maybe I'm going to increase my calories a little bit, not be in such a big deficit. Maybe I'm going to decrease my protein intake a little bit, not be so rigid with my protein. Maybe I can, you know, afford to drop it a little bit so I can have a little more freedom. Maybe I'm going to increase my carbs or something, but make some sort of change. Also, Find some new recipes or treats that excite you. Try something different. Maybe try a meal prep company. Just try something that's different that you could get excited about. Facts. That's what I told my, I told my client the other day. Try a meal prep company. Just have one yeah. a day so you don't get bored. Because in the past, he said, why diets failed? He said, because it's all meal prep. So he got bored. So that's why he failed. I go, see, I give you the freedom to eat. So you have an option. So we are in a hurry. You got your meal already packed, ready to go. Just heat it and eat it. Done deal. Right. Easy. Yeah. Another thing is switch up your gym or your workouts for new energy. Go to a new gym. We do that. We do that. We've been yeah. doing that. Same gyms, but different locations we go to. Yeah. Yeah. I remember two years ago, actually, in October, I felt that I was starting to burn out. I felt, uh-oh, 
I feel like the wheels are coming off the bus. I was lost my interest in weightlifting. And I was like, this is not good. Cause I know it's a domino effect, right? If I'm like, Oh, I'm skipping workouts now, then I'm going to start eating looser. And then the weight's going to start piling up. So I felt it coming on. I'm like, "Uh Oh, okay. I got to do something. I've got to get excited again. And that's when I signed up for orange theory. Yeah. And thank God that I did that. It, it was like, it couldn't have been more perfect because right after I signed up in October, then my life went upside down because my mom passed away in December. Yeah. And because I had orange theory, it kept me on track with working out and all of that. And had I not done that and entered into such a chaotic, horrible time in my life, already feeling the burnout from the weights, I probably would have quit working out completely altogether. And then I probably would have just let my macros go by the wayside. Just like that. See? So just that one decision I made, I identified the burnout. I made a change to get in front of it. It honestly saved my life. And look, you guys, this is a coach admitting this. We're both coaches. Yeah. We're human, though. We're not like robots. We're human. We have emotions like you guys. We get hungry like you guys. We yep. have to stay disciplined, too. And some other things that I do when I'm feeling like that, kind of burnt out, is I'll get a new workout outfit, honestly. I just I, I treat myself to a cute new workout outfit or some new shoes, and suddenly I'm excited to go to the gym That's a good tip. excited to work out. That's a good tip, actually. I like that. You're right, though. Yeah. Because I need, I feel like I need new workout clothes. Yeah. Like you, and you, if you do, if we go and get you some new, you're going to be excited to go to the gym. Put right? your new stuff on. Yeah. I don't know what it is, Flex you guys. in the mirror. Ugh, look at the pump I got. I'm joking. No, but seriously, no, though. No, you're right. You're it, right. It is. It helps. It really does help. Sometimes it doesn't have to be some deep thing. Don't you overthink write in a it. journal. Yes. Blah, blah. Sometimes it's just, yeah, get it. Get some yeah. Lululemons, yeah. okay? That's it. Something. Yeah. The other thing that really helps, and I don't hear people suggest this a lot, but create a new playlist for your workouts. Oh, yeah. Music is life in the gym. You got good music, your workout's going to be that much better. Yeah, like music You're right. really gets the soul. Like, do you have a song or specific artist or type of music that really motivates you? Uh, a few, actually. One of them is our wedding song. I love that oh, song. Oh, Nicky makes Romero. Think, yeah, I love Nicky Romero and Avicii, and I love all that. Oh, just I love that. It gets me fired that. up. Yes, yeah, so the playlist. It's my brain, it gets my brain like, boom. So I'm like, watch this. No, and I tell myself in my head, nobody trains harder than me here. Watch this. And you know how I train. I'm psycho. I go hard. It's the music just getting me fired up. Yeah. And I fire myself up. You yes. Know? And it, that's it, what you do. You get music, fired up. I think music is so underrated for especially. There's studies that come out. Music's excellent for working out in the brain. And it helps read all of these things, even though I'm talking to you guys about make sure you have discipline and learn how to work through discipline. These suggestions I'm giving you will re-up that motivation, actually. It'll restart the motivation, which is good because yep. if we can have motivation, we want to get the motivation because it's the easiest to stay on your program when you're motivated. Upbeat music, too, is my suggestion because I've listened to reggae and it's cool, but then that's like the workout. It's, reggae is more relaxing and sometimes I... There's, t there's a time and place. Sometimes I just cruise. I don't want to go up gangbusters. I have, but I have my music where I want to get fired up and go gangbusters too. I think the, the theme for this episode is gangbusters. Yeah, go hard <laughs> or go home. That's my attitude. So I have a couple of songs. There's a song by, I can't think of the name of it, but it's an Eminem song that gets me. So oh, I know which one it is. Don't slap. Sorry. I'm drawing a blank. But I know of, which song you're talking about. Think of it. So yeah, there's yeah. an Eminem song. It's like an that underdog song. I get so freaking. I know which song. I love it. I used to love Stronger by Kanye West. Also, that was very motivating for me. Oh. And I do like my like Coldplay, even though it's a Coldplay. little slower, but it just, it I don't know, I feel Coldplay in my soul. Like it hits my soul. It's hard to explain. And it makes me feel like, I don't know, like I can tackle the world. So I love Coldplay. I would love to go. I've never seen them but I would love to. There's somebody I would like, I would know every song if I went to their concert. Like, I would love to go to a Coldplay concert. Damn, you know who else is a good at music? I didn't grow up to them, but I love them now as an adult. It's Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, I love, oh my God. I love the music I had the biggest too. crush on Anthony Kiedis. I you kinda and every like, woman. No, but I like that. I have so many, like, And it's all California music. You're I always have talk about different Cali. types. I yeah. like, I, I had a little part of me that kind of likes that Dirty rocker musician look. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Travis Barker. I used yeah, to have yeah, a yeah. thing for him yeah, too. Yeah, for sure. It's funny you say that. We all have different types that we would hang out with, I guess you'd say. Yeah. There's, yeah, well, there's certain you... types that I hang out with, and there's certain times you wifey up. Okay, so no? now you gotta now you gotta share. No, I'm not sure. No, you're not putting me on the spot. Why? 
Hey. What is it you want me to share? Just share like what would be the type? What would be your type that you wouldn't wifey up? I know it's like you like a, but I. What, what do you think it is? I'll, I'll, I'll let you guess. You know me so well. I think just a female tattoo artist that's all tatted up. Yes. A little uh, rough, grungy, a mm-hmm. little grunge vibes. Yes. Yeah, that type. See, I'm right. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. See, and for me, it's that I, rocker boy musician. And it's, I wouldn't want that as like my husband because I'm so weird about like hygiene and not looking like that. Yeah. I've dated strippers in the past. I've told you this. Yeah. But I wouldn't, no offense if anyone's a dancer or entertainer, but no, I wouldn't wife you up. Sorry. Yeah. Why is it that, guys, right. we're totally getting off track, All but that's okay because we, yeah. we covered the topic. That's what's called candy with coffee. We're talking freely. But why is it that men, fantasize and love like the strippers so much i don't know i don't know what it is because to me it's erotic i I think that men have it in their head like they're like that behind closed doors one-on-one they're actually not (laughs) because to me they're not like what people think they are i think that knowing that they're only doing those things for me because i'm paying them yeah is it is a wind out of the sails i'm like oh you don't really think i'm hot and you're you just doing this because i'm paying you you know what i mean yeah I oh, think. no, I never was a client of theirs, ever. That's the mistake number one. When you date them, you don't become a, you're never a client. You're never a trick, as they call it. So then how do you be, how do you end up dating a stripper if you're never, if you're not a client? Aren't you uh, first observing them in the strip club? Yeah, yeah. How do you do this? How to explain it? Damn. For instance, sometimes we'd be with my boys that order table service bottles and we all be hanging out and some girls will come around and I'm like, nah, I'm good. I don't want no dance. And then they get to know before they're just sitting down talking with you like, hey, I, I don't want no dance. So this is on you. If you want to sit here and talk to me, it's fine. But I'm not paying you for this. So you're hitting them off and hitting it off. And next, you might not exchange numbers that first time. But then if they see you again and you, they know you yeah. again, then they actually know you're exchanging numbers. Yeah, that's a, that's that? good game. You just you taught never, men Yeah, I just game. gave you a gym. Never pay for lap dance. You're just a trick after that. They're that's not going to respect so you. Never. Happened to me in Vegas. My boy was in the... Strip club for hours, never been. I took him to the Crazy Horse or one of the... What's the... Cra- what, 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 that's crazy over there? Not the Crazy Horse. What's the big popular Where one? In Vegas, yeah. Dre? No, why can't I think of the name in Vegas I'm a, for... I'm not blanking. I don't know, but you're not helping at all because you didn't come up with the Eminem song and no. now you don't know well, the name of... Well, you put me on the spot. Kingdom. I didn't know I was supposed to talk about Eminem. There's a lot of his songs. Anyways, while he was in the back, I'll tell you a little story. Yeah. My boy Gabe took him after the clubs in Vegas. We're still f- fucked up on drugs and drinking. He goes, I go have fun, bro. I've been here many times. I'm not even, I sat at the bar. I was drinking water at the time. I had two drink tickets. I was like, I don't even, I'm not drinking. I'm done. I was done. I, was, I wanted him to have fun. I'm sitting there and the dancer comes and sits next to me. And I go, uh, would you like a drink? Because I'm not using these. I don't want these. I'm done. I just came from the club. And next, you know, we're sitting, talking for a good hour or two. My boy's lost in the sauce in there. Exchange numbers. Come back a month later and we hook up. That's, that, that, that's how it happened. You went back to Vegas w- to see her? No, I went for a Manny Pacquiao fight. Who I forgot who was fighting. Ricky Hatton, that's right. Ricky Hatton, he was fighting. So oh. I went back to Vegas like a month later. We had talked here and there. And I was like, hey, I'm going to Vegas for the fight. You want to link up? And we linked up. Did you go to her place or did she go to the hotel? Like, I'm trying to get all the juice uh, over here. I actually, yeah, I, I'll tell you the truth. I'm actually an idiot for even going to her place because she had a kind of a crazy ex. And at that time, I was still on federal probation. It's like, Uh-oh. fuck, if this guy shows up. It could be problems for me. You know what I'm saying? I was, yeah. So I said, hey. Uh, Did she have a nice place? Yeah, it was nice. It was nice. But I had my own hotel. I said, we should probably go to my hotel because this can get ugly. And I'm off. I don't want. I, that's a violation. Yeah. I'm not supposed to be in Vegas. Not good. No. I'm not supposed. To, I was in Vegas without permission. First Uh-oh. off. That's all bad. I just, I, I'm rebellious, you guys. Yeah. That's sweet. I just thought of the name. The Experiment Rhino. There you go. Bingo. I didn't think of the name. I'm, I, I'm lying to you guys. I looked it up. Oh. But I knew it was like. I'm like, how do we not know we've been there I know, I many know. times? So, so, yeah, so yeah. Right and, and, and you know what's funny is somebody gave me a tip to do that years ago. Hey, don't ever pay them. Then you're a trick. You just talk yeah. to them. And that's it. Don't give them a dollar. Because once you do your dollar, you're their client. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In general, I, as a woman even, I always was more interested in the guy that wasn't showing interest. So that's just a normal thing. Mm. If, I, if there's a group of guys and they're all flirting and buying drinks or whatever, but they're with a friend who's like off to the side and he's uninterested. That's the one that I want. His That's the one I want to talk to. That's the to. game I always play. Never show interest. Never yeah. show your cards. That's a good... Even with the girl's beautiful. Or go whisper near, I think you're very beautiful. Walk away. Boom. Her up. Just leave. Give her a compliment and walk away. 
don't go back to her. This net. Back her up. Yeah. Then the night you next, she's smiling. You guys exchanging numbers. You didn't yes. tell me. You didn't do that with me. Babe, we met in the gym. You know what I'm saying? So calm down. You didn't You're my whisper client. in my ear, sweet nothings. No, it wasn't <laughs> like that. We didn't meet you in a nightclub or a bar either. <laughs> oh my gosh, I got not a single sweet nothing. No, you're a client. Why would I play you a compliment? That's creepy. You're a, I was your <laughs> trainer. You're my client. You don't just start playing compliments to your client. That's, oh that's creepy. My. <laughs> that's unprofessional. Come on. You pay, would I pay compliment to my client? No, you don't do that. Oh, that's my no goodness. No. This one took a turn. Mm -mm. I know. Oh. But, yeah, those are my stories. Dated some in San Francisco. Remember I told you I dated one in San Jose. I met her in a, I forgot where I met her. I think it was a nightclub or bar. It wasn't at her work. But no, she was I fucking remember cuckoo. where you met her. Didn't you date the girl that you introduced me to after you met her at the dog park? Huh? Didn't you date that girl you no, met at the dog park? No, no, no. That she worked at that one place, topless bar? No, I no. didn't date her. We were okay. friends. We never hooked up. No, I'm telling you a different story of a girl. Oh, I met. so another girl. She yeah. worked at a strip club? Yeah, here in San Jose. Oh. And what and happened? Nothing. She was psycho. She'd get to drinking and she became a whole different person. I said, no, I can't do this. This girl's going to get me in trouble. I'm, I'm, she's going to bring the beast out of me, if you know what I mean. She was crazy. Yeah. A lot of the, unfortunately, a lot of the dancers are missing their fathers in their lives. I hate to say it, but it's cliche, but that's the truth. They have up upbringings. Daddy issues. Yes. Or yeah. some kind of family issues, something in their life. If you really dig deep to the core, it's something. Yeah. No, you're right. There's always, because why are they doing that? Yeah. And Especially in this day and age, there's so many other ways to make money. Yes. Even if you want to do like the sex work, whatever, like OnlyFans, Only where fans. you're dealing with people electronically, so yeah. much safer. Yeah. That's I don't hate on people's hustle, whatever no, they got to do. Exactly. Me neither. I don't Listen, judge people. You got to do what you got to do. It's easy to judge people. Real easy. It's so easy to judge people, but I think I'm not just perfect. Like, I've been in prison. I sold drugs. So I'm not, who am I to judge? You know what I'm saying? I'm no better than nobody. It's like what you got to I Listen, in this day and age with OnlyFans, I think it's great where they can do all of this stuff electronically, never have to go to some seedy. Mm -hmm. Touch club some, and touch dancing. Touch some nasty client that's dirty, stinky breath, anything. Ugh. Oh, then, I feel then, sorry for those ladies sometimes, the clients I got to deal with. And then pretend you're and, into it. And, and let's be honest, men are disgusting. A lot of men. I hate to say yeah. it, but they're, ugh. just the way they Gross. live and carry themselves. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Candidly with Coffee. We will see you on the see next ya. one.